So I got into recruiting in 2009, and it was because of my college days, really. Like, when I was first interested in playing college tennis, I was around 12, 13 years old. I was playing a lot of sports, but I decided tennis was going to be the one around 12, 13, 14. That, I, that, that was the one I was going to play for sure. And knew I had a chance um, to be a college athlete, and that was my dream. I just wanted to play college sports. So when I figured that out and I went down to the States, I mean, everything was so new to me, even though I was used to coming to the United States. I was used to watching college basketball, the March Madness on TV and football and all that stuff because I really liked it. But I didn't really understand what college sports and being a student athlete was really about. I saw so many people struggle with recruiting and going to the wrong schools, not getting the proper advice. I mean, as simple as I had a friend um, who, who came in as a transfer, and initially he went to a school where it wasn't the right fit. He worked with an agency in Spain and then came over to Jacksonville University. And it was even when he transferred, he was getting help that during Christmas time, they didn't even like organize when school ends properly. And he ended up sleeping on my couch for a week because I was there doing an internship. And we talked about all the problems that happened. From there, it like triggered in my head. I was like, there's gotta be a better way. And at that point, I wasn't really thinking business, but like fully, like I'm gonna do this, but I figured there's a better way to help people. And like, I've always been interested in helping everybody behind me because, you know, that's what athletes do. Now, fast forward almost 10 years later, I'm in a position where I've helped thousands of athletes, but it's the transparency and it's about, making sure that every family knows what they're getting into. They know ahead of time what, you know, what this process is all about, you know, what it takes as an athlete to get to the schools you want to get to, knowing that the chances are very low to play at Stanford or Duke or all the top schools that everybody wants to go to. But there is a chance, and if you make it, it's amazing. If you don't, there's so many other amazing opportunities and schools out there. I know he does. He does. So, we've got a kid right now. He is in an interesting situation. He's uh, basically improved his level to the point where he's now getting hit up by the big schools. So, five star, four star player, all of a sudden, five star player, now keep playing tournaments and keeps increasing his level of game, getting the attraction from the coaches, and now you got big time Louisville coming after him hard. He's got four scholarships opening up in 2019, which means there's a lot of money, his wallet is fat, and it is ready to dispense. So the whole deal is that he's gonna be the first guy to go there, and um, he's gonna have an opportunity to earn one of those spots. What did Rex say? He's like, he likes you, he's gotta sign four players. Yeah. He's got to sign four players, so he's got money, and he's willing to give you some money if you're the right fit. But, hey, by the way, what did that guy tell He said no. He said he doesn't want you. No, I'm kidding. Um, he, said, he said no, you're not on his top four. He's got other guys. He's trying to recruit a couple guys that are very strong international players, I think. And um, just not, you know, not every coach is going to want to recruit the same players. Yeah, I don't know. That's just it. It's not. It's not a. It's not a diss. A diss to you to say you're no good. It's just everybody has their own players that they like that they are tracking. Just like Rex likes you. Like everybody tries to make the cookie cutter model, right? Everybody's like, oh, but it's so easy. You know, you can show interest in a coach. Oh, and I show interest, and and coach doesn't show interest. But when? How do I know he doesn't? And then, oh, I can search all these colleges, and if I put in like, I want a D1 school. And it's got to be like uh, in the Northeast and it's got to have a certain academic level. And then Harvard pops up and Yale pops up and all the Ivies pop up. It's like, yeah, but like, do you actually fit that? So it's like, so, you know, you're doing so many things um, to set yourself up for opportunities that like, it's, it's not, it's, it's nothing like you can compare to really. It's, it's the only thing that compares somewhat close to it is finding a job, I think, like where you're getting recruited for a job. But even then, there's so many things on 
Like, because you have two components. You have the academics and the athletics. So when you have academics and athletics, it's like, now you're not just chasing one thing. You're chasing a couple things. So, it's different. Like, there's just so many different angles that you can go about it or start to think about that could stop it from being an opportunity. But then there's equally as many angles that create an opportunity and you don't even know it. You know, and like, so coaches, like, for example, where you can create an opportunity is like coach tells you like, oh, they're recruiting certain positions for your grad year or you see it up online somewhere or on a roster opening and then you automatically assume they're not recruiting that position. But then three months down the road, road um, somebody gets injured and all of a sudden they need someone to fill in that position or they've thought they've recruited a certain player and they had six in the bag like potential recruits I gotta score one it's looking great and then all of a sudden boom it crashes and you're you're next up even though like a couple months before you were like out of the game and this is like leading up to the next season so like even to give an example today I was talking to a coach and he's like you know I just got like three girls and they're like super interested I thought for sure I'd get one of them and then all of a sudden like they're showing interest interest then they go cold on me and like that happens because maybe for them another school opened up in the same situation so they weren't trying to lead you on they were just like hey this is my first option but all of a sudden their actual first option opens up and then they're like see ya and then you know that's how it all switches so it can turn like super fast on you and you have to be ready for anything but obviously you got to ask the question so step number one is go to FAMU coach and say I really enjoyed the visit my parents and I are wondering, you know, what what type of scholarship I could I can earn with you. Well, what does that look like? And see what he says. If he says, no, like, I see you as a walk-on player, then you know your answer. If he says, well, I got this much money probably and this much academic you can get, then that's good too. I just had a call with who's part of the first Team Miami golf program. He's a good kid, really nice. I think he's he's got some intelligence there because he's willing to listen, which a lot of kids aren't willing to do. But lacks a little bit of education on recruiting and stuff because like every kid does, and he's probably could have been a little more proactive early on, but in his defense, he didn't really know much about it. And so that's one of the things we're trying to do with the First Tee program is get those kids started early, giving them education, giving their parents education. Um, I like that his dad was straight up and just saying, like, let him handle it, knowing that his kid is responsible and on top of stuff. But I think the trouble is that, like you heard in the conversation, he's um, trying to save his parents money, and I understand it. You know, his dad works really hard, and he's got that right understanding that, you know, it, it's going to put a burden if he's trying to go to a school that that might be good for him, but at the same time, you know, um, hurting his family's uh, financial situation, doesn't want to put his family through that. I just, there's just a handful of schools that that could be an option for. So he's got one in hand that's possibly an opportunity. Most kids like him, uh, if you watch recruiting, like that's the number one thing people suffer with when they're talking to a coach is getting down to the nitty gritty, which is the negotiation or the do you have money for me? I mean, coach is telling him he's interested, but he's not giving him any more details. What does that mean? Okay, I like you, but I like you for a walk-on, or I like you for a full scholarship, or I like you for 10%. Like, so he's going to do that now when I instructed him, and then we'll see what happens. If not, you know, there's a handful of schools out there where he can fit, and uh, he's got to understand, and every player has to understand, that if you are, if you are wanting a large scholarship, every coach is going to only be able to give a large scholarship to guys that are going to, or girls that are going to impact players, players that are going to come in right off the beginning and play top in their lineup. So if 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 you're trying to go for a school where you're like at the bottom, like there's no in in men's golf, for example, there's four and a half scholarships to divide. How are they going to give you a full ride to the number six, seven, or eight guy on the team? It's just not possible. So full ride will maybe go to number one or almost full ride to one and two, uh, depending on the coach. To, um, you know sort of divvies up the money. So understand, go after schools where you're gonna to be topping the lineup, and that's that. So hopefully if he does that, he'll be on his way to a good deal.